Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online special request character build with me Sherman. Today I'm bringing you guys the Warlock character. Now the, the idea for the Warlock was given to me by one of my um, subscribers and they asked if I could create a one-handed and staff build for them and then just show them kind of what you can do with it. Now, I will say this, there's better options than what I'm gonna show you here. This is just something I came up with. Um, it, it's primarily a focus more into Magicka, so I kind of have the stats a little backwards here, so I'm gonna fix them real quick. Um, but yes, it's, it's to focus more into Magicka with the option of doing stamina-based uh, gameplay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just put enough into Magicka to take us to about 30k. So 34 maybe. And then we're going to just dump the 30 points into here just to kind of give us an offset. Now, the idea behind this character is when the person told me the idea, I said, I wonder if I could do this. If I can make a Gandalf the Grey type character. He uses on the front bar a one-handed sword and a staff on the back bar with a necromancer. Now I have done this in the past with a Sork and it works out pretty good, but with the Sork they don't have a, there's not a lot of um, stamina abilities built into the class. So you, you're you just basically using magic mostly with, um, your primary bar is gonna have overload on it and your back bar is gonna have, um, you know, like an, another ultimate, but it's primarily to play with overload and you use the sword to kind of just give you this extra melee type damage thing and I did it with a wood elf and I played my, my wood elf character from 1 to 50 that way um, if you guys have seen her uh, in, in you've probably seen me play her but yeah so this is basically loosely based on Gandalf and that character design um, that I played for a long time so I just kind of combined the two so let's go ahead and take a look at this build so this is called the warlock and it is a Breton Necromancer. You can be any race with this. There are other races that are gonna have better options. Um, but I like the, the, the Breton because I think that it really plays well into this whole conceptual idea. As you can see, we have 34 points into Magicka. That gives us 30K Magicka. We have 21 into Health, 24 into Stamina with 30 points into Stamina. And then we have 839 Mag Recovery with a 951 Stamina Recovery. This is a Tri-Stat build, so you are playing off all three. Uh, stats primarily Magicka and Stamina, and we do have a 1982 weapon damage with a 1464 spell damage, 37% weapon critical, 38% spell critical, with a 14k spell resist, 13k physical resist. We are using the Thief Mundus Stone to boost our spell crit and our weapon crit as high as we can get them. Now, depending on which way you want to go, you can use weapon power pots or you can use spell power pots. Um, with this one, I would probably go spell power because you're primarily going to be on the staff bar most of the time. The sword and shield bar, or sword bar, sorry, is primarily there to do your stamina uh, based abilities. So. so, with a power pot, we go to 954 mag recovery and a 951 stamina recovery. We do go to uh, 1996 spell damage with a 2182 weapon damage, as you can see here. Um, still pretty good. We are using Tristat food. Now moving on over to the gear, taking a look at the different stuff here. We are using um, the Tristat food, like I said. I'm trying to find it right here. The tri long fin pasty with melon sauce. And we are using Tristat pots and the, the uh, Spellcaster Elixir and the Gold Coast Warrior. Um, before I go any further, I forgot to do the disclaimer. This is purely a roleplay build. This is not something you're going to use for hardcore dungeon play. And like, You could probably get by in most base game dungeons and veteran, but the future dungeons, I would either equip a two-handed sword for the front bar or dual wield for any DLC dungeons on veteran mode. Um, and that's just because it'll boost your spell damage and it'll boost your um, weapon damage. And it'll plus it'll give you your benefits of both magic and stamina on both bars that, for the setups we were using. So this is for when you're playing primarily magic damage. This is for when you're playing primarily stamina damage. And you can go either route with this. Uh, the stamina side, because you're only using one weapon, like I said, you do lose out on a five piece bonus there, but you can do it. You're gonna pull about 18K DPS 
uh, on the on a small skeleton, on a big skeleton, about 21, 22. And then on the, with the magic aside purely, you're going to get closer to 20k DPS with a 20, uh, 25k DPS on the bigger skeleton, when more in the gr organized group play. And yes, 25k is more than enough to play most of the content, 90% of the content, in normal and in veteran. Um, trials uh, is a little iffy in some areas, but you could still probably play them and get by in normal. Veteran, I'd probably get some better sets. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the sets that we are running, starting with our monster set. We are running a Lumbris. This is to give you um, Ma a War Max Magicka, and then when you deal Flamer Shock damage, you have a 10% chance to summon a Meteor Shower. Uh, that deals X amount of damage to all enemies and within 4 meters every second for 5 seconds. This can happen every 8 seconds. So this thing is pretty much going to be going off every 8 seconds. Trust me, it's ridiculous. <laughs> the next set we're using, of course, is Hunting's Rage. This is just to build out our stamina capabilities uh, with the stamina disease stuff that we and poison stuff we mostly play with. So, as you can see, this gives you weapon critical, max stamina, weapon critical, and weapon damage. Moving on again to the jewelry <coughs> set, which you guys already saw, we are running spinners. Spinners is actually a really good setup for this, because it gives you that higher max magicka spell damage, and then the spell penetration. The thing you have to understand, when you have a lower spell crit, build for higher spell penetration. This way you can build your character to do more spell more direct spell damage and and take advantage of that so when you do crit it's going to hit really hard and then when you're playing stamina side the same thing works in reverse so all right let's go over the traits and the enchants um so starting with the helm you guys already saw we have an invigorating helm we do have invigorating on the legs as well with tri stats on both of those and then the chest is reinforced with a tri stat Reinforced on the, the, the chest is going to give you better resistance values for in, being in light armor. This is a 5-1-1 setup, so you are wearing 5 <coughs> light, 1 heavy, 1 medium. The heavy and medium are in the legs and chest, the rest of it's all light. Now, moving on to the other stuff, the belt and the shoulders are max magicka enchants. Um, somebody asked me earlier, why do you do this? Uh, it's basically because if you put tri stats in here, you don't get as much value out of them as you do with the pure magicka or stamina or even max health ones because tri stats only give you a hundred and something for l3 here so it's not as effective to put tri stats here as it is to put a primary stat one so you will get more out of it this way so we do have the max magicka in both the belt and the shoulders again like i was saying and then on the smaller pieces we have divine traits so the boots the belt, the shoulders, and the gloves are divines. And then in the gloves and the boots, we do have stamina enchants. And this is just to kind of balance out our character to be both magicka and stamina based. So we can go either route if we so choose. And you can go full stamina if you want and use a lot more stamina based abilities from other um, locations in, the, in your character's skills. And you can actually play pretty well that way. All right, moving on to the last and final thing the jewelry and the weapons jewelry we do have the two tri runes both of these have weapon damage in them the reason i went to weapon damage is because it was primarily supposed to be a stamina based character on the front bar but using a single weapon on the front bar really takes that makes you kind of lose out on that so it's better to use uh it would probably be better to use two spell damage here to boost your spell damage and just take the weapon damage from the hunting's rage uh, to be honest. So your choice here, spell damage or weapon damage, or you can do one of each. Really up to you. And then on the final one, we are using an infused stamina recovery. The reason for this is so we get that good balance of magic recovery and stamina recovery on this character. Because you are a Breton, you do get 100 uh, magic recovery, and then you also get the reduced magicka cost. So your magicka stuff is going to be super cheap. Your stamina stuff is going to be a little bit more costly, so you, you kind of want to run the back bar as your main damage bar, and then the front bar as your just like, I'm this is where I'm doing my, like it would normally be the opposite. You'd have your sword on the back bar, staff on the front bar, because you want your front bar to be your primary staff, or primary bar. 
All right, now moving on to the weapons, we are using a Nernhon main hand with a magic damage uh, or absorb magica that does magic damage, restores a little bit of magica on the front bar. This is so we can maximize our spell damage and stuff and our uh, st stamina damage on the front bar. On the back bar, we are using a spinner's infused lightning staff with a weapon and spell damage enchant. This is to boost that higher weapon and spell damage, so when we're on the back bar, we can actually take advantage of that higher spell uh, capability. All right, now that you guys have seen that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about skills. So going over the class skills, as you can see here, I went with mostly stamina-based skills on the Gravelord, except for two. Uh, this is always going to be Magicka. And I went with this Skeletal Arcanus for this because I, I think it fits a little bit better for the idea of a Warlock type character. Next we have the Detonating Siphon um, skill here. This thing is amazing and while you have it slotted you do increase your damage by 3%. So I keep this on the front bar to increase my stamina damage output by 3%. <clears throat> Alright, Bone Tyrant. Same thing, mostly you're going to see I took the stamina one. I did take Ravenous Goliath, so if you do want to play as a tank, you can do that with this character. They do work pretty good, but mostly you're going to work in dungeons um, as, a, as a tank and stuff. And I would equip a shield. Just throw a shield on. That, that way you, you've got the survivability. Also, rec uh, Beckoning Armor is what we use to chain enemies back into us. It's really cool. It's really fun, especially with this. Um, some of the other things we have here, uh, the one thing that we do use a lot is Empowering Grasp, and this is because hitting you or your allies with Empower, uh, this thing will empower you, increasing the next light attack you do by 40%, and then hitting a Skeletal Mage or Spirit Mender enhances uh, them for 5 seconds, increasing their effectiveness by 40%. So basically what I do is I, I make sure my Skeletal Mage is out, like this, and then I'll, I'll, if he'll line up, I'll hit him with it. So that way his spell damage is boosted. So you can see that. It, it just shows it. it's boosted for six seconds. So, <clears throat> But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the skills. So I do unlock all the skills and passives for my class. When it comes to weapons, since we're just primarily focused on destruction staff, I use just destruction staff. Now if you do want to learn the dual wield passives and skills, you can do that. Or you can even, like I said, go two-handed with this on the front bar. Um, moving on to light armor, all the passives. Make sure you do that. This is a light armor build, so you're going to take advantage of those. Medium armor, top two, and the bottom one, because you will take advantage of those as well. Heavy armor, you're going to take the top three. And yes, you're taking advantage of those three as well. Everything here you're taking advantage of. Moving on to soul magic, we do have soul magic stuff unlocked. Um, I did try this, so I put Shatter Soul back here as my primary um, damage dealing thing. This actually works out really, really well, because if you focus on the back bar mostly, and you're using this as your, your primary damage, this thing does like 48k damage over 2.5 seconds. And then it explodes at the end and deals like 12 to 13k damage to the enemies nearby. And it's just like, what? Like, this is crazy. And then, of course, it reveals hidden enemies. Um, but moving on, so Soul Magic, I do do those Fighter's Guild. We do have Fighter's Guild abilities unlocked and the passes because you never know if you want to use some of these. Mage's Guild, same thing. Unlock the skills and passives. Sigic Order, I do the same thing. Skills and passives that best reflect my ability to play. And then the Undaunted skill line, I do have all the... Um, Abilities unlocked. This is because every single one of these is a synergy, so I might want to use these for different reasons. I might want to use Mystic Orbs for some damage and some group support. I might want to use Bone Shield for solo play. I might want to use Tangling Webs um, on the back bar when I'm playing mostly stamina based. Uh, the nice thing about that is, like I said, this thing on the back bar is really good uh, when you incorporate things like from the Fighters Guild. So if you take in like Silver Shards, and you take trap, Rearming Trap, and you put the Undaunted um, Tangling Webs, and then Alliance, you go with Assault, and you go with the Razor Caltrops. You can do that, and you can actually play this as purely stamina-based if you wanted to. And it works out really well, and the Magic Staff is just there for the Lightning purposes, to, to have a chance of hitting the enemy and setting them off balance and concussing them. So, 
<clears throat> no wall of elements needed. And then on the on to the assault skill or the uh, Undaunted, I want to go over this. Make sure you get these two passives. They are super important. You have to play Undaunted Dungeons or the dungeons in the game, or you have to do the Undaunted Daily Quest to unlock this. Moving on to Alliance Assault, I take the skills that best reflect my ability to play. Same thing here for support. And then moving on to Racials. We are a Breton, so make sure you get the passives. Now, any race can play this, and I want to cl be clarifying on that. Any race can play this build really good. Dark Elves and Khajiits will play it the best because of their hybridized type racial benefits, but any race can play this. Breton just has some certain benefits and perks like uh, master, Magic of Mastery, reducing the magic cost of your abilities by 7%. Spell Attunement, which gives you higher spell resist and gives you magic recovery, and that spell resist goes up when you're, when you're afflicted with Chilled, Burning, or Concussed. And then we also get the 2000 Max Magicka. <clears throat> Alchemy, Medicinal Use, and Provisioning, Gourmand, and Connoisseur. All this stuff is, is going to help you in the long run. So let's go ahead and go over the skills we have on our bar, starting with the front skill. We have Venom Skull. Now this thing does some decent damage, as you can see. It does like 5,000 something damage. Every third hit of this, or cast of this, does 20% more. While slotted, any Necromancer ability you cast will apply to the third cast of this. So you're going to cast all these by the time you cast this again, because this is like a spammable on the front bar, you will get that 20% extra damage. But with the way this is set up right now, you're going to run through this front bar without ever using um, a lot of this stuff. Next, we have Blighted Blast Bones. Now this thing will, will charge up, run out, explode on the enemy, deals disease damage. And it also does the uh, major defile on them for 4 seconds, reducing their healing received for 30%. It also creates a corpse on death. There's an important reason why that's there and that early. <laughs> Next, we have Unnerving Boneyard. This is to apply Major Breach and Major Fracture. It also does Frost Damage, and it's also a synergy for your allies. And this one consumes corpses to do 20% more damage. You want to use this, this, and this in super fast su succession. So this light attack, this light attack, this light attack, and then this. By the time you get this fired off, this will be running towards the enemy, getting ready to explode. You don't want it to explode before this, after you cast this. So, and there's a reason. So next we have Ruinous Scythe. This is a really powerful ability. One, this thing hits multiple targets. It's a seven meter cone in front of you. And it slices enemies doing X amount of physical damage. And every third cast of this, so every third enemy you hit will set all enemies off balance. So if you hit a group of like five mobs, all of them are going to be set off balance. And then you heal for the damage that you do for the first enemy and each additional enemy hit up to five times. So you can actually heal yourself to max health pretty much with this ability. Next we have Detonating Siphon. So this thing does a certain amount of disease damage over time. And it, what happens is it, it, it only affects a, a dead corpse. So this is why we use the Blighted Blast Bones. The Blighted Blast Blast Bones will run out. Well, by the time we get to this point in casting this ability, we can cast this and it'll do this disease damage in an area of five meter radius around the corpse. So if it's right at the enemy, that enemy is going to be standing in this and taking this disease damage over 12 seconds. If, <clears throat> if the siphon lasts for the full duration, the corpse explodes, dealing more disease damage to all enemies around the corpse. And then while slotted, your, your damage on the front bar is increased by 3%. We also have Pestilence Colossus. This thing is just a beast. It does uh, X amount of damage one on three different hits. So it does X amount on the first hit, and it gets larger on the second hit, and uh, larger on the third hit. And then the first, second, and third smash, um, the damage is, is pretty powerful. But each smash applies major vulnerability to any enemy hit for three seconds, increasing their damage taken by 30%. What I do is I usually save this um, because I use this as my primary thing. And I'll put drop this right before I cast all this stuff on the front bar and swap to the back bar. Because if I can pull it off, I can get this dropped, do this, this, and this, and have all three of these get the major vulner uh, minor vulnerability on their initial hits. So, 
really good. Now moving on to the back bar where we're going to be primarily playing, we have Crushing Shock. This does a certain amount of Flame Frost and Shock damage. And then enemies hit, casting are, in, are interrupted and set off balance for, and stunned for three seconds. This is more of just like... I'm going to help the group keep enemies from casting stuff and setting them off balance kind of thing. This is your primary spammable. Now we have Blockade of Storms. This does a certain amount of damage uh, over time. So, and it has a chance of setting enemies off balance if they're concussed. Then we have Storm Pulsar. This is really good for trash cleaning. It also applies Minor Mangle, reducing their uh, the enemy's max health by 10% for 33 seconds. So if you go up to like this guy here, it doesn't apply to these guys because he's considered a boss, but you can see, like I can, you know, like I can proc it, and it also applies your your um your enchant on your weapon, so you can keep that applied the weapon damage enchant on multiple targets. So, all right, next we have our skeletal arcanist. This one is basically you summon the skeleton to fight by your side by sixteen for sixteen seconds. He does X amount of shock damage. Two nearby enemies and creates a corpse on death so you're gonna primarily use the him as a way of boosting your damage and you're gonna do that by putting down this empowering grasp and you, the best thing to do is always try to summon your pet like this and then back up so you can hit him with it like that and that way he does a little bit more damage with his shock um, stuff And then we have the Empowering Grasp. This one is a uh, snare. It snares enemies by 50% of their movement speed uh, for five seconds and inflicts minor maim on them, reducing their damage done by 15%. Hitting you or your allies grants them Empower for five seconds, boosting your next light attack by 40%. And then hitting a Skeletal Major Spirit Mender, of course, boosts uh, their effectiveness by 40%. It's a really good skill. And then, of course, the last but not least, we have Shatter Soul here. This thing is just an absurd amount of damage. Um, we use this as our primary ultimate. It only costs us 100, where this thing costs 225. So we are going to be using this primarily in our rotation. So now, moving on to our CP, guys. Taking a look at the red tree, <clears throat> we have 56 and an ironclad. This reduces your damage taken from direct damage attacks. Do I have this set up for PV? No. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. Just checking. So we have 56 in Ironclad, reducing your direct damage taken from uh, direct damage attacks by 20%. Forgot Breton, we do take all 38 points instead of splitting them between light armor focus and spell resist. Because we are playing a Breton, we get that extra spell resist in our race. And for light armor passives, so we, we just put everything into here to focus on our physical resistance. We get Thick Skin. This increases or reduces your damage taken from damage over time effects by 13% with 31 points. We have 43 into Hardy, reducing your damage taken from Physical Poison Disease damage by 10%. 43 into Elemental Defender, reducing your damage taken from Flame Frost Shock and Magic damage by 10%. And then moving on over here, we have 40 into Bastion. This increases the effectiveness of your damage shields by 16%. And then 19 into Quick Recovery, increasing your healing received by 5%. Now, <clears throat> somebody did ask me why I've been doing this with my with my CP and I want to clarify again when you put into here and not into hardy and elemental defender thick skin and, and this what happens when you put more into here is you only get small percentage increases so most of the time you're gonna have like maybe 23% occur, um, increase here or 24 and then you're gonna have like 10 and 10 here or 9 and 9 and you're gonna have like like 7 in here <clears throat> thick skin and hardy or ironclad both stack with hardy and elemental defender so these reduce all flame frost shock and magic damage this reduces physical poison disease damage all of it and then thick skin reduces any damage over time effect that's applied to you that means burning chilled concussed that kind of thing and any kind of like aoe a little bit of aoe stuff um mainly the burning shield and concussed poison that kind of stuff so this 13% stacks with this 10%. That's 23% there. And then this is 20% with this 10%. That's a 30% reduced damage from direct damage. But the thing that a lot of people forget is resistances. Your resistance value, for every 660 resistances you have, 
you get an, a certain amount of mitigation to all damage types, both spell and physical. So when you look at this resistance, 13, 5, 34, I'm going to do something here just to show you guys. Um, I, I know I'm making the video, so we're going to put 13,564. I think that's what it was, but we just divide this by 660, and it comes out to 20% damage mitigation. So you're, you're taking 20% less damage up front with higher resistances. So this actually plays out in the mathematical formula just a tad bit better because this will put you at a higher resistance value, which is all damage types. So that means damage over time, anything is reduced by a greater value. So when it gets to that damage reduction, that damage reduction is already playing its part even more effectively. So just letting you know. All right. So that's why I do that with the CP now. And I started doing this with all my characters. Like even my heavy armor characters, I put like, uh, I'll put 20 into here and I'll put 19 into a uh, spell shield. And I do the same thing, medium armor, 20 into here, 19 into here. Unless I'm playing a, a DK or a Templar, and I might put more into the physical armor aspects. And if I'm playing a Breton, I'll put more into the physical armor aspects because we already get more spell resist with those races and classes. All right, moving on to the green tree. We put 40 into Warlord, reducing your break tree cost by 16%. 16 into Sprinter, reducing your sprint cost by 10%. 16 into Bashing Focus, reducing your bash cost by 10%. Uh, by 10%. And for 75 into uh, Mooncalf, increasing your stam recovery by 14%. We do have 43 into Arcanus, increasing your mag recovery by 10%. And somebody even asked me this, why didn't you put in a tenacity? This gives you resources back on your heavy attacks. 10% 10 per 10 added to 30, that's a 40% return, right? If I'm not using a resto staff or heavy armor, there's really no point to put anything in here at all. Because it's you're almost wasting points. It's nice because it does give you a little bit more, but 10% of like 1,800 and something is going to put you at like just barely over 2,000 2, 2, in resource return. So it's really not that big of a difference. Moving on over here, we have 40 into Tumbling. This reduces your dodge roll cost by 16%. We have 40 into Shadow Ward, reducing your block cost by 16%. And again, this is all because of the way these characters are set up. That's why I do this this universal kind of setup now. Now moving on over here, we are using the hybrid setup. So we have 43 and a bless, increasing your healing done by 10%. 23 and elfborn, increasing critical damage and critical healing with magic abilities by 10%. And then 43 and the elemental expert, increasing flame frost shock and magic damage by 10%. And then moving on over here, we have 16 and the physical weapon expert, increasing light and heavy attacks with your one-handed sword. <laughs> by 10% and then 40 in the Master at Arms, increasing direct damage. Your one-handed sword's doing light and heavy attacks, that's it. So it's primarily doing direct damage, so those two play really well. Staff Expert, we have 16 points in here to give us 10% of our light and heavy attacks with our Destruction Staff, if we use the rest of the Staff or Overload from a Sork, and this also applies to Werewolf Form, and then the 40 in the Master at Arms, which I already went over. 23 in a Thaumaturge. This increases your damage done with damage over time effects. Resto Staves and Destruction uh, Lightning Staves. Their heavy attacks are considered th uh, damage over time. So they are boosted by this on heavy attacks. On light attacks, they're boosted on Master at Arms. So just letting you know. Next, we have 43 in a Mighty, increasing your physical poison disease damage by 10%, uh, and then 23 in a Precise Strikes. This increases your critical damage and critical healing with your stamina abilities by 10%. So that's why we have this setup as more of the hybridize our character, give us greater output of our character, and all that stuff. All right, now that I'm done with that, let me go ahead and show you guys a quick parse of this. Now, I'm probably not gonna do that great, to be honest. Um, because I'm not that good with this character. Um, for some reason, I just can't uh, really pull that high in numbers. 20k is the highest I've ever pulled on this precursor. I'll try to get close. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a spell power pot. We're just going to start with the front bar. And we're just going to do this. And like I said, 
oh, we're gonna try and get that uh, elemental guy in there. We didn't. So this is where you're gonna primarily stay, like I said, on the back bar. And I already screwed up the rotation once, so I'm just gonna run through the course and just kill this guy. I'm not even gonna waste my time. Um, he's dead. I did about 11k because I screwed up the rotation pretty bad, and I apologize for that. I can get it closer to 20k when I can pull the, a good full rotation. Alright, so let's go over here to the big guy, and I'll show you guys what I can do here. I can do roughly about 22 to 25k normally on this guy. I have gotten about 28 with him once, so let's go ahead, and we're going to do this a little different. We're going to summon the Skeletal Arcanist so we can empower him first. And we're going to just do this. Come on, come on. There we go, 20k. And he only used the ultimate. Um, almost thought I missed that one. So the, you'll only use the ultimate when it's up. The rest of the time you're gonna be doing force shock. Really? Stop it. Um, you're gonna do force shock. And this is gonna give you that higher chance of, of getting that, keeping that DPS a little bit higher for when you're doing that. So. Two, three, and then swap bars. And you want to do about three of those um, with the in-between. So this time we're not going to do the Force Pulse. Uh, we're going to do the ultimate. So, And that's what you want to do. Every time that ultimate's up, you're going to want to fire it off. So every other rotation, you're going to use the ultimate. And like I said, you can get about 20k out of this character, 22. Uh, 24 if you can pull the better rotation. Um, I'm not really good with it, and I'm not going to lie. So... <clears throat> but yes, it can be done. This kind of build does work. It's not great, but it can work. So, and just to show you guys what the what it looked like. And so this is on the first one. I had 3,000 spell damage with a 54% spell critical, 60%. Um, or this is on the big one. Sorry, 60% uh, critical damage, 9,000 spell penetration. And then on the back bar, we had the stamina, which was 3181 with 43%, 60%, and 1500 spell penetration, or physical pen. And not too bad on some of this stuff. Our Poi Venom Skull was hitting for about 16k. Blighted Blast Bones, 22. Light Attack was hitting for about 10. Detonating uh, Siphon, or Shatter Soul, was hitting for about 14k. Blockade of Storms wasn't too bad. Crushing Shock, because it does all three types of damage, was doing about equal with the um, Light Attack, uh, doing a little bit more. So, But <clears throat> the person asked for this, and I always try to do my best to, to, to give what they asked for, and this is what I came up with so far. I will show you guys this in a solo setup now. Um, because I can't, I don't have a group with me to go into a dungeon. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to change out Bone Tyrant. We're going to grab Beckoning Armor. We're going to put that right there. On the front bar, we are going to change out um, the Detonating Siphon, actually, with a heal. So we're going to go Living Death. We are going to grab Blood Sacrifice. And then we are going to change out our Blighted Blast Bones. <coughs> For a damage shield, and we are just going to grab our uh, light armor pass, uh, light armor damage shield for that, and we are going to put it where blighted blast bones is, because we did, there's no reason to use blighted blast bones when we're using um, this setup. So now I'm going to take it into a dungeon. Of course, my favorite depths of Malatar. I'm sorry that the video is a little bit longer than normal, guys, um, but that's because I added a little bit more information in there just to clarify a few things. And yes, I do really like this build. So for the person who asked me, can you do this? Yes, you can. It works out, but it's not that it's not it's not super great. This would be better as a, like a support character than a damage dealer. 
um, because you are using a lot of skills to help support your group, like Major Breach and Major Fracture, you're using synergies, and taking advantage of some of the heals that your, your class has is, is pretty good too for your group. Right, beckoning armor. This time we're going to use tripods. And <laughs> we don't even really need a heal because this this siphon thing, this scythe, does so much damage. Healer. Okay. So I probably either am going to die against the boss or something. I'm not going to try and keep that a secret um, right up front because I'm not really skilled with this character, like I said. Um. Let's see how well we can do against Mr. Boss. I'm a little leery, guys. I'm not going to lie. Because I'm not too sure of myself with this one. And this one I will use the Pestilence Colossus because I'm... Oh, I need to heal. I died. Okay, uh. not the greatest. If I was using Dual Wield or Two-Handed, I'd probably do better because I'd have more damage output. Um, so it does work in some solo situations. The better you are at playing a build, the more effective you become. So that's that's just a given. The more you play it, the better you become. Um, I didn't play this around with this a whole lot. I, I did get in, I made it, I tested a few things, and just to make sure, like, parsing-wise it was working, and then I took it into a few uh, overland areas to test it in overland play, and I didn't take it in here yet, so I didn't know, like, how effective it would be in here. Uh, I should have guessed I was going to die. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a really fun build. It's called the Warlock. If you want to use the dual wield in two-handed, you can. Um, those are options. So, and remember, every build I release is pretty much a suggestion. You don't have to play it the same way it's designed. There's so many different gear sets in this game that you can pick and choose from to create very unique dynamic builds. And that's what's so great about this game. So, and now you guys know what's coming next. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.